From afar, the home of Nanay Lilia looks like any other house in Barangay Tonasan in Muntinlupa City. Built before the 1970s, it's one of the first houses in the barangay. But through the years, the house has been bleeding from a danger that lies beneath the land it stands on. It was built near the West Valley Fault system, a fault line threatening to cause havoc and result in tens and thousands of deaths. February 6, 2023, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake struck Turkey and Syria. Houses and buildings were reduced to rubble. More than 50,000 lives were lost. The deadly earthquake in Turkey and Syria refreshed the nagging question. Could the same or even worse massive quake happen in the Philippines? After all, the Philippines is located in the Ring of Fire, a long horseshoe-shaped geological belt along the Pacific Ocean, characterized by active volcanoes and frequent earthquakes. We have around uh, more than 150 um, active faults. So uh, some of these faults are small and some of these are, are, are large, are, are big in length. We are all uh, monitoring these active faults because we have 116 um, seismic stations spread all over the country. One of these active faults is the West Valley Fault System, a 100-kilometer fault that traverses Bulacan, Rizal, Quezon City, Marikina, Pasig, Makati, Taguig, Muntinlupa, Cavite, and Laguna. A stretch of the fault is located in Metro Manila, which has some of the most densely populated cities in the country. There are theories that so-called the big one will occur if the West Valley Fault system moves and causes a magnitude 7.2 earthquake. The term big one was originally coined for the worst case scenario that might be generated by the West Valley Fault, it's magnitude 7.2. So that's the worst case because based on the length, it's that's the maximum magnitude earthquake that it can generate. I think that I cannot say exactly the year, but there were a one or two small events um, along the West Valley Fault. I think it's in 2018 or 2017. If you're near the epicenter, um, of course, the ground shaking that you would feel would be stronger. Parang ano yan eh? A good analogy would be a light bulb. Okay, so uh, a bulb, say it's 10 watts. And if you're closer to the bulb, of course, uh, the intensity of light that uh, you would feel would be stronger as, say, you're like uh, farther from the bulb. The Japan International Cooperation Agency, Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, and FIVOX conducted an earthquake impact reduction study for Metropolitan Manila. Released in March 2004, the study says that a magnitude 7.2 earthquake caused by the West Valley Fault may result in the loss of thousands of lives and the destruction of many structures in the country's capital region. It likewise indicates that such a powerful temblor may bring death to 33,500 people and injury to 100,600, as well as heavy damage to or total collapse of around 168,000 residential buildings. A 7.2 magnitude earthquake may also damage roads and bridges, according to the same study, as eruption of fires are also seen as highly possible. The analysis was released in 2004, or 19 years ago, and Metro Manila's population has grown since. Thus, in another study titled Greater Metro Manila Area Risk Analysis Project released in 2013, the possible death toll from a magnitude 7.2 earthquake in highly urbanized Metro Manila is pegged at more than 37,000. Based on our uh, polyseismic data, the recurrence interval is uh, between 400 to 600 years. And the last time it moved was in 1658. So uh, 1658, that's uh, plus 400, which is the lower limit, that's 2058. So uh, again, um, it could be uh, in 2058 or it could be plus 600 years, plus 200 years more. There are uncertainties, okay, my error, yan, plus or minus probably several decades. And so 
that's the reason why we're saying that um, it may happen uh, before 16, uh, 2058 or it could be happen 2058 or it could happen on the upper limit which is the 600 years. We are walking along Pais Street in Barangay Tunasan in Muntinlupa City and according to the Fault Finder website of Evox, this street is along the West of Valley Fault System. We were able to speak with some of the residents here who told us that they are also worried about the dangers of a possible earthquake. Among the residents of the street are spouses Melly and Abbott. They have been living here for more than 20 years and have been witness to some changes in their area, which they attribute to the fault line. Nung pagdating nyo po dito, kasi dito po kayo, 1996. 96, so... 1996. Nung so 1996 po, itong kalsadang ito, talagang... Pantay patag. yan, patag yan. Ngayon na lang yan, nagkaroon na sila ng bitak-bitak. No, anong sasabi nyo, port line. Tapos ngayon, hindi na sila pantay. Eh, hindi na siya pantay kayo. May steady na siya siyang ganyan, kasi 2 inches ang binabahan yun eh. Ang alam ko talaga, may port line dito. Kaya pagka halimbawa at nakakaroon din kami ng may lindol, syempre natatakot na kami. Kung mayroon kami ibang lilipatan na sigurado namin ligtas, pupunta kami doon, eh wala rin eh. Pero sa palagay ko, para sama-sama na kami mag-anak kung ano man nangyari sa amin, hindi eh, bahala na ang Panginoon Diyos. Also living in Barangay Tunasan is Nanay Lilia. She bought a house here in the 1970s, not knowing it was near a fault line. For the past 50 years, Nanay Lilia saw her family grow in this home. Nay, ito, napansin ko din, ito. Parang humihiwalay na ito, oh. Oh. It, parang humihiwalay po yung... Hindi, kasi nakadikit doon, oh. Opo. Oh, po. Eh, talagang humihiwalay ito, oh. Kaya lang doon, hindi pa natatanggal doon. Cracks have also taken over other parts of Nanay Lilia's home. Kailan niyo po napansin na nagsisimulang lumubog? Matagal na, siguro. May mga... Baka meron naman yan mga 20 years ago eh. Despite the risks of staying here, for Nanay Lilia, her home was also a permanent witness to the vibrant life she has lived so far. Since 1970s, paglipat pag namin dito, tsaka ako nagkaroon ng ganyan. Masaya naman. Tapos after mga 19, 1998, oh, namatay naman yung papa niya. Pero hindi pa rin ako maalis dito. Stable pa rin. Gigibain itong bahay namin, magtapatayo kami bahay doon sa church. Uh, Ipapagibahan nyo na po ito? Oo, kasi nga may false line. As we walked around Barangay Tunasan, we noticed some cracks on the streets. Talagang sentro kami ng false mm -hmm. line. O kagaya nito, nakita nyo, ayan, tinamaan yan, ang baba niyan eh. So, eh, yun ang lagi naming tinututukan dyan, kasama namin ng city rescue. With all the risks of the big one happening, is there a way to prepare for it and minimize damage and casualties? There's no technology yet that you know, like, uh, can say exactly when an earthquake would happen, down to the minute, days, or even, or even you know, like exact month, exact date, exact hour. The best way, of course, is uh, uh, we, we have to follow the, uh, the building code. So uh, earthquakes per se, uh, don't kill people. It's the uh, collapse of human-built structures such as buildings, houses, walls, dumps that may claim lives. The National Building Code of the Philippines was adopted in 1977 and provides a framework of minimum standards and requirements to regulate and control the location, site, design, quality of materials, construction, use, occupancy, and maintenance of structures. However, experts have stressed the need to review the 46-year-old National Building Code. We need to be sure no, that, that, that our structures are strong and durable when it comes uh, when the big one happens. As what we have observed sa Turkey, wala na silang time para tumakbo, di ba? Yung mga nakita nating bumagsak na building na all of a sudden it crumbles to the ground, perhaps, ano, yung iba sa kanila, wala na alam kung ano nangyari. Personal opinion, ano, kakalungkot man, pero I think marami talagang structure natin ang hindi design na mag stand ng napakalakas na lindol. Engineer Ariel Santos is the president of the Association of Structural Engineers of the Philippines, which is tasked to craft the National Structural Code of the Philippines. An update of the code is eyed to be released this year. It will include guidelines on structures' ability to withstand earthquakes.
tingin ko ko, kailangan talagang maba- mabago yung National Building Code kasi sa ngayon, parang walang power yung mga mga building officials. Pwede hindi mag-issue sila ng cease and desist order, di ba? Pero yung iba hindi naman sila susundin. Uh, pag hindi sinasunod, wala naman silang magagawa na, di ba? So dapat bigyan din ng power yung mga building officials para hindi basta-basta maitatayo yung isang building. For FIVOC Sport, they say they are in constant monitoring of earthquakes reported nationwide. Watchstanders are on the clock charge in FIVOC's office in Quezon City. There are 116 remote seismic stations scattered across the country. Once they record earthquake anywhere in the Philippines, they transmit that data to FIVOC's office here in Quezon City and the watchstanders process those data to determine the earthquake's epicenter, magnitude, the time of occurrence, as well as depth. There have been calls to relocate inhabitants along the fault line. In fact, some local government units have already marked areas deemed as hazard zones. The problem, however, is that some structures were built even before the site of the fault lines were discovered. Before an earthquake happens, it would be best to familiarize yourself with earthquake hazards in your area. It is important to know where the evacuation area is and prepare an emergency supply kit. What should we do? Again, um, if there's strong ground shaking, you do the duck cover and hold. Uh, you go under the table, you stay there for uh, the duration of the shaking. And then once the shaking stops, you have to evacuate immediately and go to an open space or an open area. If outdoors, the public is advised to move to an open space and avoid electric posts, bridges, and buildings. People living near the shore, on the other hand, need to move quickly to higher grounds due to the threat of tsunami. And while earthquakes remain unpredictable despite available technologies, One's best weapon now is being prepared and informed. This is Neil Mercado for Inquirer.net.